Insignia design. That's a pretty good design, you know. I'm going to go over that one. And after that, I'm going to go one more example with the resonant inverter as converter, by the way. And uh, I don't know how far we are going to go. Hopefully, it's going to finish both. So, because Wednesday, I want to talk about the applications of power in front. So, different applications. You know. For example, there's a one paper from me. So it's a little bit old, I think it's for 2008. But you can see how Twitter previous was set up, you know. I show you inside the circuit simulation they have and you kind of see it is modeled with a simpler the software we had before. But uh, I want to talk about different applications like HVDC, like the electric car. I don't know. I have a list of things that I want to just mention, you know, the name and just we'll look at it as a block. We look at it as a block. So this is an inverter. I don't care how we control it, how we do, but we know what's inverter. Inverter is a DC to AC converter. Or for example, we have a DC to DC converter. Anybody have a Dell laptop? Looks like let's just go on.
this is like a college crowd. They, there is no, not, nobody is under the water to come plug the, for example, the submarine to the summer, right? This one is gonna come sit here, and there's an inductive charger. It's gonna charge the, charge the battery inside the submarine, and after that, it's gonna leave and go and come back again, you know? There are little submarines, they, they work on it. In department, department of Defense, Defense and O&R, they are working on this kind of thing. This is a circuit, four over there. We are, we are proposing this one, and we are saying this one can go to a potential watt to charge this thing as fast as possible, and, uh, but is there is a converter. How close it has to be? No one there details that, I'm not going to go to that one. There we have a PhD with 30 years of experience in magnetic design, he's working on all those kind of, you know, because there is a, not air, there is a water. This is not air core, this is a water core, because between these two, there is a water, there is underwater, and he's doing a lot of <coughs> finite elements to optimize the, this value that I'm putting here, for these L values, is coming from his design. The capacitor is coming from my design, because uh, for the resonant converter and those kind of things. But he designed the, 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 the transformer, right, with the water, water core, and give me the value, now I have to go select the, the, the capacitor value in order to design this one. This is one circuit, very simple circuit. Before going there now, we're gonna go to look at this uh, Infineon design. I like it, it's a pretty good design. As I said, at some point, if you guys want to design a resonant converter, this is a very good application. This one was uploaded in your uh, website. So basically, let's look at here. The end result of this application node, they want a design, a 250 watt a system. A solar a solar panel is connect. It wants to connect to the grid all the way. But between the solar panel and the grid, there is a one DC to DC converter because you can see the input voltage is how much? 33 volts, right? If you are going to connect it to the for example, 208 systems, you cannot connect it from Y. One. Too small, right? For the 208, if it's a three-phase system, we need a 400 volt. If it's a single phase, we need about like 250 volt DC, right? To be able to connect it to the uh, single phase grid, right? So 33 volt is the panel we have, right? V in. We want to have a 250 volt, right? And to connect to the this one is going to give us a 400 volt DC output, so this one could be input of an inverter to be connected to the grid, right? So the, the goal is to design something like this, 30, 33 volt in, 400 volt out for the converter, 250 watt, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. First is 
this is just kind of reviewing the resonant converter. Let's go over this one because you guys haven't seen the LSP. Let's look at here first. See, here is going to be the input voltage, right? We are going to have the input voltage here. And there is no question on this part. Don't worry about the exam. Just I want you to see a real another example of this kind of thing. We're using the inductance. See, this is an input. This is an H bridge, right? We were, most of the resonant converter we talked about, they were half bridge. But I said, you can use the H bridge, right? There is no difference. The difference between the half bridge and the H bridge, half bridge is going to put the half of VDC, right? VDC over 2 minus VDC over 2. H bridge is going to put the VDC and minus VDC, right? So. There's the H bridge here. There is a resonant part, CRLR. There is a transformer here, right? Transformer, there is a magnetization inductance. That's the reason they call it LLC converter. They call it LLC resonant converter, this guy. There are two L's in the circuit. And there is a transformer here. You select the ratio. That one is going to help you also. If you want to boost the voltage, you can select the right one. And here is the diode rectifier. Again, this is a full bridge diode rectifier. And here is the output capacitor or zone, right? If we are perfectly at the resonant frequency, what we are going to see, see, there is a little bit, see, what we said before. We said if we are at perfectly resonant, resonant frequency, this current is going to start from zero, come to zero here, and go this way, right? But here, see, there's a little bit off. <coughs> Can somebody tell me why? I don't expect you to know, but just I want to know, can anybody guess why, when you say it's a perfect resonant converter, perfect resonant frequency, so the current is going to go like here, right? The zero is going to be here, zero is going to be here, zero is going to be here. And we are going to have a basically zero switching loss, because we do switch at the zero current, right? You know why it's like that? Okay. Initially, I myself, I thought it was a mistake, you know, and, but I thought about it a little bit more, no, it's not a mistake, it's correct. Why? See, look at here. These are the diode currents in this side, right? These are the current here, right? So the diode current look at here matches the voltage. Exactly what we are expecting, right? Zero is happening here, right? There is a little bit current going here, right? This current, this current is coming here. Most of it is going to go here. A little, little, maybe five percent, ten percent, based on how much is the LF, is going to come this way, right? Mm -hmm. So, if you can bring this one a little bit down, so this is the ILR minus ILM is going to be, is going to hit the zero here. You know what I'm saying? The current is going to come a little bit down, right? So the zero is going to happen at this speed. The reason you don't, you see here, it's a little bit off. It's not off because there is some current going here. The one we discussed, there was no LF, right? There was no way that. Current here is whatever it is. We didn't even have transformer, right? The current here is the same as the diode current, right? But here there's a little bit current going this way from coming this way, right? So we call this one switching bridge or, or input converter. We call this one resonant tank. This is the, uh, they call it transformer and rectifier heating spark. And this is the output capacitor, if you don't know why the name is. Now, Remember what we were always, after that, we want to find the relation between V in and V out. Those equations we write, and we've got the gain of this system, how much is the gain, right? This one did a very good job, memorizing, summarizing all those kinds of things, this paper, not paper, application note. This is the equivalent circuit of the, the one in the top, right? So how much is the voltage here? after the H bridge, either the VDC or minus VDC. So you put it there, right? We have a CR, LR, LM, and you can transfer, you know, you have that, have that you have had that, this one in the circuitory. When you have a transformer, you can transfer all the impedances in one side of the transformer, right? So if you remember what we did before, we said we have this diode rectifier, we have this R0, we calculated R effective. How much was R effective? What's the P pi square over A, right? Times R D C, right? But think about it. This is a E called R A C, didn't call it R effective. 
this one needs another transformation, right? We go from the DC side to here. Because you're going to see the equation, I don't want you to think where, where it is. So our effective, we had, we bring this resistor here, right? We calculate, uh, what was that, I don't know, um, the pi squared over eight, uh, eight, something like that. I forgot, I kind of forgot what was it. But we brought this resistor here, right? But if we are going to plot everything on this side, we have a resistance here, right? To come here, what should we do? Times by NP over NS to the power of 2, right? Then you want to transfer impedance from one side of the transformer to the other side of the transformer. It's going to be the, no, the, the side you are going, number of turns divided by other, other side turns to the power of 2, right? You know this one from circuit theory, right? So because you look at me somehow, kind of, <laughs> <laughs> kind of um, lost, I'm thinking maybe you haven't seen that one. Cool. Here. <coughs> this is the equivalent circuit of what we have up there, right? Now, this K is the, is the gain, is the VOAC here. The one we calculated also, you know, divided by V in AC, right? The one we calculated. The gain is this much. Just formalize it, make it real simple for us. Here there is an FX, keep, keep in mind. There is an FX, there is an M, and Q. Right, Q already we know what it is, that's a positive factor. But let's put <coughs> the next phase, it's gonna define for us. How much is M? M is going to be defined between these two values, uh, based on these two values. Uh, Q is going to be equal to factor. Either you can go L or C R and the R A C, right? And F X is the normalized frequency, switching frequency or the resonant frequency. How much is the resonant frequency? One over two pi square root of L R C R, right? <coughs> That's the resonant frequency. So this equation is going to give us the relation between the V output and V input, right? Now. This is just a review of resonant converter, and later on it's going to get to the design. So here you wrote all those things. Q is a quality factor, this is this way. RAC, eight, this is what we had before. Eight over pi squared, R zero, right? Well, look at here, there's the NP over NS to the power of two, because we brought this one from the secondary side to the primary side of the transformer, right? FX is called a normalized switching frequency. Basically, is a Switching frequency divided by resonant frequency. <coughs> How much is the resonant frequency? <coughs> we have LR and CR, right? And M is defined LR plus LM over LR ratio of, I don't know, total primary inductance to resonant inductance. So now you know what are those parameters in that equation, the K equation we have you now. <coughs> now look at this. Look at this curve. What are these curves? Selected, we want just to learn a little bit more about this curve and resonant, resonant converter. He selected M would be six. I don't know, we had a design. M was, uh, I'm not sure, M over LR plus, M was LR plus LM over LR. Basically is one plus LM over LR. And just to let you know, because some of you maybe didn't have the uh, electric, uh, electric machinery, LM usually is much bigger than the LR, just to tell you. So LM over LR usually is like two, three, four. You can select it, you can design it, but usually it's a number more than one, usually. So basically, this number is one plus LM over LR. It can be two, three, four, based on how much you're gonna select LR. <coughs> now, if selected such that the M is six, N is six, you put the uh, M here, six. And he changed the normalized switching frequency from point one to 10 of FS, right? So it's gonna, for example, let's say if the switching frequency is 100 kilohertz, how much is the point one times 100 kilohertz? 10 kilohertz, right? And this is 10 times 100 kilohertz, it's gonna be one, one megahertz, right? It's gonna be one megahertz. So just to let you know how this scale works here. But it's normalized. Now, the K factor, this number is the Q. 
So he's putting different put, uh, put a, the, the, uh, you remember Q was a representation of the load, right? If you had a heavy load, the Q was high, right? If look at here, it said this is a heavy load. Heavy load is this one. Q is five, right? This is a heavy load, and this is a very light load. So based on what load you have, this gain, if you plot it, versus frequency is going to be something like this, right? And also another thing we mentioned is we work with the switching frequency more than resonance frequency. Resonance capacity more inductive. But the switching frequency is a little bit, but not a little bit, it's more than the resonance frequency. Inductive. inductive. Yeah, very simple. We said this is the, the XL is L omega, right? And XC is 1 over C omega, right? If you go more, if you increase the frequency, XL is going to be bigger, XC is going to be smaller, so basically the inductive uh, part is going to be bigger, and we are on the inductive side. So look at here, for all this curve, to a stay, see there is a FX here, this is one, right? To a stay on the inductive side, this is for another curve for Q1, this is for Q5, you go, if you are on the left side of this pix, if you are on the left side of this pigs, you are on the inductive region, right? And if you are on the negative side, sorry, on the right side of this pigs, you are on the capacitive side. And in this paper, explained why we don't want the capacitive side. See, the region is here kind of marked off. We don't want to be here. This is ZCS. But if you go to the inductive side, we went through it, remember? We had a ZVS, zero voltage switch. We want to be in this area, this side. We don't want to go to the capacitive region. Capacitive region also is going to give you soft switching. It's going to give you the ZCS, zero current switching, not zero voltage switching. But this curve, this curve shows you where you are. Now, in general, we're going to go through this, the, the design the steps. But usually, you know how much is your maximum load. So you know this curve, right? And the light load, you know, you have, you know, how much is this curve? And voltage regulation. For example, you have a 33 volt. This system is not going to be just uh, with the K. Also, the NSNP is going to help. You know, if I select NSNP like 10, it's going to 10 times 3, 30, 33 volt is like a 330 volt outside, right? If, if my ratio is 1, I'm going to get a 330 volt, right? So if I want to go to 400 volts, maybe I need another, I don't know, 0.2, right? 1.2, you know, gain, you know, would be enough to get the 330 to 400 volts, right? Uh, <coughs> but in general, you will define your maximum load. For example, in this example, how much was the maximum load? We were designing the this system for 250 watts, right? That's the heaviest load we are going to have. Right, 250 watt is the heaviest load we have. So if you select a Q based on 250 watt, that's the that's the heaviest load you are going to have in your system. Right? How much is the minimum load? You know, minimum load could be zero, or could be usually they don't work with the no load, but it could be up to 10 watt. You say, hey, because this one is going to be connected to a solar panel. If I have less than 10 watt, the power generation shut down everything. I don't want. It. Thing. It doesn't work to go through the hassle to do all this kind of thing, keep everything on, you know, I'm going to get it out. If you look at all the solar panels and wind turbines, it's not like that. All the time they are working. For example, wind turbines, they have a cut in and cut off the speed. If the, the, the revolution of the uh, RPM of the um, um, wind turbine is less than something, they call it cut in. It's a thing, forget it. Generating power, let's not let, let it rotate, but we're not going to generate any power because of lots of things, you know, electrical, mechanical things. They they, they don't. You have to reach to some RPM, and say, okay, this is correct. Okay, if we are this much or more, we are going to go generate power, <coughs> right? The solar is <coughs> the same thing. If if the power generation is less than something, forget it. We're not going to generate that. No, we'll, we'll kind of you know shut down the system. But you will get your heaviest load and your lightest load. You plot this curve, and we'll go for the next one now. Now modes of operation. You put the modes of operation here. See, he just plot two cases here. Ten. 
and, and sorry, Q is 10 and Q is 0.2, right? This is the resonance frequency, right? This is above resonance frequency. This is below resonance frequency, right? This is the below, but uh, still, when we are on the right side of this peak, uh, still we are inductive, right? <coughs> still we are inductive. We could be less than resonance frequency, but it's, because for this case, this is the this is the borderline. If you go to this side, your capacity, if you are to this side, you are inductive, right? And at this that at this point is the resonance for this care, for this Q, right? Now. So this is the mode of operation, you know. If S1 and S4, they are on, right, the current is going to go like this, and D1 and D4, they are going to be on. This is one mode, right? We transfer the power over there. And these are the, these are the power transfer mode. Let's call it this. We can call it power transfer mode. If this one and this one, they are on, so we send the power here. If this one <coughs> and this one, they are on, again, they put this graph here, and you can see all the time the current is this way. The current is this way, right? These are the power transfer mode, you know? You transfer the power from the input to the output. Can I go this way? Why not? Diodes. Because these are diodes, right? Because these are diodes, they are unidirectional. Only power <coughs> can go this way, right? If I want to buy directional, this one has to be like this. And they need to have anti parallel diodes. There are two more modes, you know, because I call it power transfer mode. So is there again, is there any other mode? Yes, there is. Look at this mode. Yeah, <coughs> you can go through here. Nothing is going there, right? They call it circulating you know, mode. Circulating mode. This is one of the things that's going to cause us loss, you know, and uh, some problem, you know. When the only the LM, the all the current is going to go through here. You know what I'm saying? All the current is going to go through here. There is no nothing going to this side. I'm not sure what mode you call it. You know, he was giving. But this is circulating, you know, current. Now, <coughs> this is it ever, is, is everything clear so far? You guys, you can follow, it, right? So yes, the circuit is a little bit different from what we talked about. But very, very similar structure, right? Very, very similar structure we have. Um, see, this is the at resonant frequency, above resonant frequency, and less than resonant frequency, right? So here, there's some notes here, and explain all of them. But let's look at the waveform here. See, I told you if you are at perfectly resonant frequency, the zero of current is going to happen at the zero of voltage, right? I say here it doesn't happen. See, if you look at here, this is zero of the voltage, zero of the current, right? Of ILR. And this is zero of the voltage, right? If we were ideal, it should happen exactly here, right? Because the reason we have a little bit delay is because there's a current in there. And like, still, this is a perfect case. You know, this is a still perfect case. You're going to get the minimum switching loss. This is like <coughs> resonant case, right? But you can see there is some current going to the some current going to the what, to the LM. And if you look at here, this current and this current, they are almost 90 degree phase difference. Why? Why? Can you tell me? Why? Why there is almost 90 degree phase difference between this one and this one? Actually, it should be, it should be this one. Sorry. It should be between this one and this one. Not that. Why? Because here is the resistive load, right? We have this voltage, right? These two, they're in the same phase. Look at here. But this is just rectified, right? This one is a pure inductive, right? So it's going to be 90 degree phase difference, right, between the voltage and current. So that's the reason you see 90 degree phase difference. This is a mode when we are. Uh, I think above the switching frequency here. Let me see which one was it. Remember, yes, this is the above switching <coughs> frequency, and this is when you are less than switching frequency. See, if you go back to the big figure I had, 
I said I want to be on the right side of those maximums, right? So I said if I'm on the right, right side of those maximums, I'm going to be acting inductive, right? But uh, still, on that one, I could be more than switching frequency, less than switching frequency, right? So the current waveforms are going to look like, like this. The idea? At the end, there is a practical circuit. You are going to see the current waveform. See? This is the ILR if you are above switching frequency, and this is the ILR if you are less than switching frequency, right? So look at here. These are zero current. And here is the zero volt. Sorry, here, uh, here is the zero volt. Uh, now we have these three modes. Design steps. <coughs> it says select a two maps. I don't know. You want to be four or five. This one is based on experience. You know, you don't select Q, for example, 500, because you are going to end up somewhere, I don't know. You know, can design, and you end up with some values for the capacitor and inductor, which is not practical. If you can start, if you are a name, you can select whatever you want, you know, and you end up with bad, some, something not practical, and you have to go back. But you select a Q max. You say, based on what we have seen, maybe Q4, 5, 6, something like that, in that range, you know. You select something. You have to retune it, you know what I'm saying? It's not with the first shot you're going to get the design done, you know. You do it and you have to go to recheck lots of things to see if this one is working or not. But you say, select a Q max. Select a Q max. Four or five well. <coughs> Again, select M value, you know, for the project. <coughs> oh, I was working on a, a project. They called it high voltage charger. That's the reason I started to read this application now. The high voltage, high voltage charger was basically solar panels. They want to charge a battery. You know, at home you have batteries, <coughs> you want to charge them with the solar. And you're going to use the battery power later on for whatever you want. And uh, what they told me, they told me, hey, the panels could go from 200 volt to 800 volt. 200 to 800 volt. You know, I, maybe I have that presentation and show you that after we are done with this one. 200 to 800 volt. So the battery voltage output, I think was a, I think it was 48 volt, I believe it was 48 volt battery package we had. But they said this battery at full discharge, they're gonna be 36 volt. At full charge, they're gonna be, I think, 60 volt. So we look at here, I have a 200 to 800 volt input voltage barrier voltage. Here I have a 36 to 60 volt, you know? I'll I think I have the presentation, I'll show you where did I end up. You know, it was not practical, what we did. And they changed their things, and we, I preferred the report to tell them, hey, this is almost impossible to control it with this way. And or there, I, to, I have to go with a different, M, M is under my control, because I can select my LR, right? To select the right M, you know? Because I try to fit this thing, I'll show you the design ID. How, what I'm trying to do in my day. We'll come back to this chart in a minute. It's just select the Q maximum value. You select some numbers here. But here it has, look at here. For example, he plotted here for Q.3, Q.5, and Q1. This is the okay. And somehow, somehow, we have figured out we need a minimum gain of 0.8 and maximum gain of how much? Uh, 1.2. This is where we need to control this gain, you know, the, the function we have, right? For example, for example, if we have a 100 volt, if time is by this one, I'm going to have 80 volt, right? If I have a, for example, I don't know, 1.2 times 60 is almost again 80 volt, right? I can get 80 volt at an hour, right? I have found out, I have found that I need a gain in this range, you know. If I can have a, a, a variable gain, which I'm going to select it, right, between 0.8 to 1.2, and I'll tell you how to select this one later, I can get what I want in my output, right? Whatever my here I have a change, I can get the voltage I want at the output, right? So, we plotted this two, gain 0.8, gain 0 1.2, 1 right? Gain 1.2. Now, look at here. 
uh, <clears throat> all this curve can they satisfy my 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 requirement or not? Look at this curve and tell me all of them are good or not. I said that I want to gain a 0.8 to 1.2. The red one does it or not? Yes. Yes. The red one does, right? If I want point, if I want to, I want a 1.2. If I switch at this frequency, right, I'm gonna get how much gain from the red one? See, this one they are representing different load, right? This is the Q. For different Q means different load, right? <coughs> so, for example, if I have a light load, I'm having this red one. If I have a heavy load, I have this green one, right? So. If I am, if my load is light and the voltage is somehow changing, if I need a gain of 0.1, 0.2, is there any place I can get it? Yes. If I switch at 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0.7 of the resonance frequency, right, I'm going to get this much gain. And I'm going to get the output I want, right? Or here, if I want to have a gain 0.8, again with the red one, red one all of the, on this right side, they're all good, you know? If I switch at this resonance, this frequency a little bit over than here, right? One, <coughs> two times of the switching frequency, two times of the resonant frequency, I'm gonna get the gain I want, right? So the red one is good. It gave me all, if any number, between 0.8 to 1.2 I want, I can select a frequency, right? And get that number. How about the blue one? Can I? Basically, yes, from here to here until I can do it. You want the red one? You want the red one? No, I'm saying no, forget that one. But, but look at here, the red one is going to happen at point 0.8 of the switching frequency, right? Point 0.7. The red one is going to happen almost at point 0.6, right? For to get the gain of 1.2, right? Mm -hmm. But look at this. The red one is going to happen at a little bit more than two times of the uh, resonant frequency. This one is going to happen maybe, this is a logarithmic, think about it, this is a logarithmic. Maybe this one is happening at 1.6. What I'm saying? 1.6. So this is almost, you know, one order of magnitude bigger than the other one, right? We don't want to switch very high, right? Why? It's it's lost. Lost. One side you're going to have locked, right? <coughs> you want to minimize that one. So the red one is going to, you have to switch at a higher switching frequency for the red one, right? But the good thing is there is an answer. Unless, unless this line ends up here. Right? <laughs> so you have to switch maybe, I don't know, 10 times, or I don't know, eight, so eight times of the switching uh, resonant frequency, and your resonant frequency, for example, is 100 kilohertz, you are going to end up to switch 800 kilohertz. That one is not possible. I'm saying we cannot find any switch to switch it 800 for power switching to switch it at 800 kilohertz. But for now, for the red one, there is a there is an answer. For the blue one, there is an answer. How about the green one? <coughs> no. So the green one is not going to give me 1.2, right? So if I'm going to select my Q max here. See, Q max is, the, I'm selecting Q max, right? Because later on, I'm going to go, later on, I'm going to go calculate my LR and CR. I cannot select Q max, uh, Q of 1. So I select maximum by Q.5. It's a borderline. Even I'm not going to go 0.5. Or maybe I'll go 0.45, right? 0.45, we plot another one. It's going to be a little bit over than this one, right? The peak is going to go more than the line, right? So you select, you select a Q max for your system. For example, in this case, Q max could be uh, 0.5, right? Now, this is the minimum switching frequency you need to have, right? For red one is more than that, right? Any curve I have here is going to be on the right side of this one. So you, you figure out how much is your minimum switching frequency because your control system should satisfy this one. So basically here is going to be 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, something like a half of almost the switching frequency, uh, resonant frequency, right? That's the minimum switching frequency. Now, step two, selecting the value of M. 
Let's look at it. This is the same equation, just I put a different value of m and I plotted these things, you know. m will be 3, m will be 6, m will be 12. Can you tell me what's, let's go with these two. What is good about this one? Can you tell me? And just keep in mind the 1.2 and 0.8 in your mind. Sharper means higher gain. Higher gain, right? This one is going to satisfy those conditions better, right? Yeah, I still sound maybe this care doesn't. Compared to this one, look at here, this is two, right? Mm -hmm. This one, the peak is, I don't know, you can go to four or five, something like that. So you can see how you can control this curve with selecting M value, right? If you need a higher gain, right, somehow, going back to that uh, curve you had up over there, remember here, we couldn't, with the green one, we couldn't get it to, to 1.2, right? This one, I don't know what for M, how much? Uh, M value, I don't know, it's I think three or something like that. See, this one, we didn't get to the game we want. If you go with a higher M, right now the peak of this one is 1.7, maybe the peak would be three for this one, the peak for this one would be like two, the peak for this one would be maybe, for example, 1.8, right? So just my point is to see what is your valve you can control here? My point is to, to figure out what is it. M is one of them, Q is one of them, right? The higher Q, the lower gain, right? You can see here, right? The higher Q, the lower gain. You need to understand what you have. When you sit in your car to drive it, you need to know you have a brake, you have a gas pedal, you have the wheel. These are all the things you can control this system. You should know what is under your control. Now, if you're a good driver, you don't have an accident, right? But if you're a bad driver, you're, you're not using your control system correctly, right? So basically, here I'm trying to explain what we have in our hand to, con to design this system. So M is one. So you select M value of, and you saw the effect of the M value. The higher M, go back to the definition of M. M was one plus LM over LR, right? The one is constant, right? The higher M means the higher LM, right? LM over LR, right? M is equal to one plus LM over LR, right? If the M is bigger, means LM is bigger, right? What is the good things about the higher LM? Remember there are one mode, you call it, what do they call it, I call it circulation mode, right? The current goes through the LM. Right? Yeah, low current. If you have a bigger M, you have a low, lower circulating current. Circulating current, you are not transferring any power. Right? It's a kind of middle point, middle mood, you know? But if you have a very high current, you're gonna get lots of losses. And still you're switching, you are doing the switching and all those kind of things, right? Mm -hmm. So the bigger M means the bigger LM means the lower current. So maybe less switching loss and those kind of things. You put it here, just summarize it here. Higher M is a higher magnetization inductance, right? Lower magnetization, magnetizing the single circular current, higher efficiency. Higher efficiency because you're dealing with the less current. That middle mode, there is not that much current going to the circuit, right? And lower M here. What do you have? <coughs> higher gain, right? You put it here. Higher boost gain. <coughs> Narrower frequency, see? If, if I want to get, for example, the gain here, I have to go this much. Here, for, for example, 1.2 and 0.8. Here, just I need to go this much. What's the advantage? Here, my frequency for maybe is gonna change from 0.8 to 1.4 of the resonant frequency. Mm -hmm. But here, it has to go, for example, 0.4 of the switching frequency to 1. Point, for example, mm -hmm. two times of the switching frequency, right? So this is the advantage of this one, this is the advantage of this one. Now, based on your design, you have to find out which one is the better for you and find the point, okay, this is what I want. It does satisfy me for the range of switching frequency, it does satisfy me for the gain, it does satisfy me for the uh, efficiency in the system, and all the things you have to do check. You have a check mark to check all these things to see if all these things are good or not. This is a little bit too much for you guys, you know, but the <coughs> point is, I want you to see a real design product. That's my, my intention here. 
I don't expect you to understand everything, but I want you to see how a design engineer is going to go through a design problem. You know, what what part? Very many you are going to design something. You need to know what is under your control. You can select, right? They will tell you, hey, I have this. I want this. Go design. And you say, okay, so what is under my control? What, what I can select? If you cannot select anything, it's okay. I'm good. So, so how? I don't have anything to control this system, right? The more they give you flexibility, so you are more flexible in design. But what? Sometimes too much, you know, you know, selection is going to make it more difficult, right? Yeah, because you don't, wow, I have 10 things to select here, 15 things to learn. Now I have to go look at everything, you know. It's good to have some point you have a flexibility, but if it's a lot, it's going to be really difficult now to find out which one is the best place, right? So let's go to the next page. Finding the minimum, minimum, Normalized switching frequency. This is the one we want to find out. So if we have this system, right? Let's try, let's figure if we figured out the maximum Q is going to be 0.4 for this system, right? You can see here the purple one is 0.4, the rest one is 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 5.2, 0 0.2, right? This curve. Based <coughs> on the gain and all those kind of things we want, we selected Q max 0.4. So basically, this is the minimum switching frequency. We cannot go this way anymore, right? So we will figure out this one because we need this one for one of the check marks, you know, we calculate this one. To figure out this one, you need to get the derivative of this one and put it equal to zero for the Q max, right? And you find out how much is the switching frequency, minimum switching frequency. Now, voltage gain verification. So the maximum check. So in that case, we had a 0.8 and 1.2, right? All this rest of this curve, green, blue, and red, if this purple is okay, it gives me the maximum gain I want, right? The rest are gonna be okay, right? Because this is the worst case, right? So basically what you do, you found this minimum FX mean, now you can calculate this K, how much is the K here, right? This is, we call it K max. If this K max, is more than what you need, in that case we did how much? 1.2, right? Let's say I calculated K max is 1.3 here, right? We are good, right? And this is 1.3. What do I need? 1.2 maximum, right? I'm 1.3. Oh, should I be worried about the rest of this curve? No, because this one, they're all gonna be much better than this one, right? So that's the reason we go find this FX minimum, right? To find out what's the K max, to make sure we are going to get the 1.2, right? Now, so if you have your Q, you have your uh, resonant frequency, you select that one, you know, say I want to work with 100 kilohertz, something like that. So let us see, Q is now, FR is now, so you know the how much is the maximum power, right? Look at here. This is the eight over pi square n pi n p to the power of two n s to the power of two v o over p, right? This is the R O, right? R O. The minimum R is going to be when we have the maximum p, right? The output voltage is six. We want to have four hundred volt, right? We want to have five five hundred. So basically, it does calculate the RAC mean, which is going to give you the Q max, one equation here, right? Q was this divided by RAC. So Q max is going to happen for RAC minimum, right? So basically, you get one equation here. I want to have a, this one is the list selection. I want to have 100 kilohertz, you know, switching frequency, something like that, uh, resonant frequency, right? Give you another equation, you can select LR, LR, and CR. You select the LM, right? And you know the LR, you can calculate it from here. You can calculate your LM, and you go design a transformer to have this LM. And NS over NP, NP over NS also is another thing to sell. Okay, I have a 33 volt. It's going to go to the 400 volt, right? Usually, you select the midpoint. In my case, when I did, I had 200 volt to 800 volt. I want to have how much? Uh, 48 volt, let's say 50 volt, right? 
What's the be middle point between 200 and 800? Five. It's a 500, right? What I did, I said, okay, 500 volt is in the middle, right? I want to get a 50 volt output. So I need a 1 to 10, right? So I go with a 1 to 10, now I have to go check it for the rest. You see, just I set it up for the middle point to make sure, you know, hopefully this will give me the better, de the best design, because I set it for the middle one, so these two are gonna be kind of symmetrically around this one, you know what I'm saying? I can design between the minimum, based on the minimum voltage, but when I am on the 800 volt, I'm gonna get a huge voltage. I need a very low gain, right? I have to have a very low gain to compensate for that. Now let's go to the rest of the section. I'm not gonna talk about this one. This is a, you can select either bridge or, you know, half bridge or full bridge for both sides, you know? And here it talks about it, you know, center tap, all those kind of things. I'm not gonna talk about this one. And he explained that this is a very good document. Look at it, you know, it compares the losses for these cases. You know, if you go full bridge, if you go half bridge, what is the advantage? This one has a two switch, that one has a four switch. It's a very, very good document. You know, it goes through everything. So. Yes, after you come back. Now look at here, this is their project. Design example. See? This is the real problem. We talk about all those kind of things. We have a solar panel, it's almost 30 volt. We say 33 volt when we go through this one, right? Almost 30 volt. Could be maybe 27, could be maybe 36, something like that. But you know that variation, right? So, it's gonna connect with, this is single phase, this is a European basically. 240 volt AC. <coughs> How much do we need here? This is single phase inverter, right? What we say, we say, V1 is the MA, VDC, right? For the single phase inverter. Let's say MA is one, right? How much is the VDC? Basically, is V1 over MA, and we say, we say one, maybe we can put 0.9 to be a little more convert conservative. So this is a how much? 240, time is squared up to, I don't know how much it will be, 1.4. If it's 1.5, it's gonna be 360 volt, right? So maybe it's almost 360 volt. But it, does, it didn't want to go to MA1, because MA1 is right the limit, right? 0.9, for example, here, you end up almost maybe 400 volt, something like that, right? So they're saying, hey, I want to have this converter, give me 400 volts here. There is, you know what is happening here. You are the expert now on this one, right? You have 400 volts, you have a grid here, you want to inject the power over there, you do. This single phase is very similar to three phase, you know? What you did were three phase, almost the same thing you do for single phase. But here is the part you want to do, right? Let's look at this design now. There is another thing, you know, when I was looking at this one, in the phase right now you're working, right? You regulate this DC bus. With what? With this guy, right? With this guy, you said, okay, whatever is coming from the MPPT block, tell me how much is the VRF. I'm gonna put it here and regulate this DC bus, right? Here we don't have to do that. For example, you say, I want 400 volts, right? You can model all this system, the one I modeled for you guys as a current source, right? I want to have 400. See, I want to set everything to be automatic. What do, you mean, what do I mean by automatic, you know? Whatever power is coming from here, this is a, this is a maximum power point tracking, right? In the morning, noon, afternoon, there's some clouds, there's, I don't know, some temperature drops, temperature goes up, right? The power generated by here is gonna change, right? The maximum power, we, we look at the PV curve, you know, is, is a function of the temperature, irradiance, and those kind of things, right? But you guys, you want, at the end of the day, you want to have the maximum available power, right? So here is like a variable current source, right? What here it should do? It should balance it. If I want to keep this on 400 volts, whatever is coming here, it should go up, right? If, if, if 100 watts is coming here and 100 watts is going out, um, will the capacitor will <coughs> right? Whatever it was, is gonna stay, right? If here is 100 watts is coming and taking five, 50 watts out, what's gonna happen? The capacitor, the rest is gonna go to the capacitor, right? It's gonna charge the capacitor, the voltage is gonna go up. 
or otherwise. If 100 watts is coming here, 200 watts is going out, this capacitor voltage is going to drop. But you have a margin you can work with this one. For example, if your capacitor is 450 volt capacitor, if you apply 500 volt to the capacitor, boom, it's going to pull off, right? If the voltage goes less than, I don't know how much we calculated here, less than 300 volts, inverter cannot operate, right? To connect to the 240 volt, you have to have a minimum DC bus here, right? <coughs> so basically, if you go out of range, either you're going to blow up the capacitor or your, your, your inverter is not going to work. So you have a margin here. This inverter can regulate this bus to keep it 400 volt. Why 400 volt? Because for 240, I need 400 volt here. So what difference can you make? Can you tell me? Can you tell me? based on what time of the day you are, what's the temperature, this one can change, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So what are the goals? Now say it again. Output voltage should be 400 volt. Yes, but is one. this one going to do that one? <coughs> no. This guy is doing it, right? This guy is doing it. So basically, this converter look at as you have 400 volt here, like battery 400 volt here, right? Fixed 400 volt. So what else is the now, so what this converter does? Just I'm going to make it simple, you know. So this converter we have here, right? There's a V1 here, V2 here. And we know V1 is equal to, V2 is equal to PAV1, right? There's a gain, you know. You are the engineer. They're asking you, hey, the CTO calls you, hey, what should I do? Like somebody gave me this, so what do you think? Well, we need max current coming out of uh, this DC converter. So we multiply the 400 and get max power. Try, <coughs> you guys are doing it right now. You just constantly keep comparing your inputs output and, and see which way it's progressing, if it's increasing or more, and then So what do you do for that? Oh, uh, you just, you have some, a uh, comparator that... No, I know, but like don't okay. worry about the detailed control, what you are doing inside the control. What, what is your goal? Oh, you sure want to generate the, the maximum the power, right? The voltage the goes to the same place as VMP. As VMP. So oh, you want VMP. to control the input voltage in this case, right? Yeah. All we talked about is to control the output voltage, right? Mm -hmm. All the converters that okay, you have a battery here, you have a source here. I want to have 400 volts here, 300 volts here. But here the output voltage is fixed. 400 volts. This guy did it. He didn't design it that way. He designed it a different way. But if it's me, I'll design. It. I want 400 volts here, right? So here, I should go backward. Hey, I want this much voltage, right? VMP1, I don't know, VMP2, VMP3, right? I'll go calculate back my gain, mm -hmm. right? I'll go back, you know, for the control purposes, you know? I have a resonant tank, right? It can give me any gain. Now, here, what I should look at for my gain, you know? I said, okay, hey, <coughs> This is the minimum VMP I'm going to have, and I have to work up to this voltage, you know, not even the maximum VMP, because I, I, we should be able to start from the, when, the, when we start the panel, it's going to start from here, right? So I have a minimum voltage, it's going to be this much. 
among all these ones. I have a V in min, right? <coughs> I have a V in max, which is here, not this one. I'm not talking about this one, right? V in max, right? And I have a fixed V O. So I can go calculate my K to be this in right? K was V O over V in, right? If I put the V in mean, it's going to give me maximum K. It's going to give me this one. If I put the max, it's going to be this one. Let's say we calculate this one. This is 1.4. This is 0.6, right? Now I'll go start to design my resonant conversion. This other way. This one is kind of a little bit different. Now I'm saying the output voltage is fixed. Because we're going to control this one with this one, right? I have to control the input voltage. This is exactly what you guys are doing right now. There is not this middle part, right? So with this one, you're controlling this voltage to always give you the VMP you want, right? Right or not? Yeah. Okay. So, but this way it doesn't have, it doesn't do that. Look at here, it says this is what it has. So we said 33 volts, right? But you see, the input voltage can go from 18 volt to 36 volt. This is what we have in reality. And the nominal is 33 volt, right? We want to have output power of 250 volt, right? And uh, uh, resonant frequency 100 kilo. This is basically, you go to the, uh, um, the semiconductor company, they tell you what they have available. You know, you select this one based on what is in the market. And it works. But we think about it, you're going to go over this one, right? It's not the, if, if you can find the only 100 kilohertz switching, you know, how you can find a switch, that they can switch maximum 100 kilohertz, you should select this one. Because if you select this one, no way you can go to the right side of the switching frequency, right? So for example, hey, I designed this system to be, for example, 50 kilohertz in the resonant frequency. But this one maybe checked out there is a 300 kilohertz switch. Okay, that's what I'm gonna go with 100 kilohertz resonant frequency. You see, we start with this. If it ends up bad, I'm gonna come tweak these values, you know. And it said output power 125. This is another condition they want, you know. At 18 volt, they want to have 125 volt. Now, the rest is the design steps he went through, you know. <coughs> So he selected the ratio. Ratio is based on the 400 volt and 33 volt, 33 volt nominal. He meant to select, as I said, with my transformer, I selected 500 volt, 50 volt, right? So the ratio I selected one to 10. He does the same thing here. You find the M max, M, M me. He said, let's choose Q max this much, right? He wants to, uh, let's choose, you know, M is 6.2. This is all experience. When you are experienced, you know, engineer, you can have a good guess to sell like, you know. And this comes, these things come by experience. You have to work on it. You have to work on these different designs. When they give you the numbers, you can guess, okay, these are good numbers. You start with those numbers. Choose this one, choose this one. And <coughs> finding the minimum normalized switching frequency, uh, the FX mean, you know. So you find it, it says, okay, hey, uh, you should go 50 kilohertz. Not bad, you know. Where 100 kilohertz was the, uh, the resonant frequency, this is almost halfway back, right? Now, <coughs> look at this curve now. Uh, this is a Q max 0.4, and this is a Q max at V main is 0.2. So these are the curves you're gonna have. How much gain you're gonna get? There's gain here. And there's a gain here, 1.974. These are the gain you know, you're selecting to make sure you can cover everything. Now here it goes to the RAC and the rest. You know, uh, you go through the rest of calculus. But look at here. These are the simulations. These are the practical results. 33 volt, 250 watt. So look at the curve. Let me go a little bit up. If you go back, look at those tables we had at resonant frequency, less than resonant frequency, more than resonant frequency. Go check this current wave. You see exactly what you're seeing here. It's a very good design. It ends up really good. Now, the last part, 
This design was optimized for this one. This is the, this, this is the nominal one. You know, we designed it for nominal. You know, and uh, you can see the 36 is above this one, and the 18 volt is less than this one. Therefore, he selected transformer ratio based on this course number 33, and this one is going to end up like this. But this is a real example, a real design example on resonant converter. A very good example, you know. And uh, that everything is there, you know. If you go to first page, the contact information for the design engineer, application engineer is there. You can find Sam Abdul Rahman, looks like something like that. Huh? And uh, in, in future, you get these things, you know. For example, this company, IR Infineon, and I think IR Infineon was the IR already. They have a very good application notes. Go try to find those on TI. They have a very good application notes. Some good engineers, they have done lots of work. You can use their work for to help you with your design. Now I'm going to go over one example. Yeah. So I had another question on that the chart. Should have to move your way down there. The efficiency. Uh, yeah, for, for 36 volts, it says that it was in burst mode op operation. Uh, That's the asterisk says missing cycle mode burst mode operation. Oh no, the, the missing cycle mode was for I think for thirty six uh, volts. For thirty six, yeah. What, what does that mean? Uh, to be honest, I don't know this one, but most probably, you know, they, you got a problem with the control. It is a kind of a stability, I believe. You know, stability, you know, and most probably, so you can see the wave was early from the. You know, it should be something like this. You know what I'm saying? But they are not. See, this part, but then here. This part is similar to here, but suddenly something happened here. It looks like it's missing something in the <coughs> Now, I want to go through one example. And uh, this one. should be done by maybe 10, 15 minutes. So are you okay on this necessary guys? Because <coughs> we have another discussion session out there. I'm not going to use that one, but I'm saying, you know, Try to finish it in uh, like 15 minutes, you know, this example. <coughs> yeah. Uh, the re in the end, they made the real circuit instead of they test the real circuit. Yeah. How did they make the real circuit? I had it. You have a PCB board, you know, you design your circuit, you know, you saw this, right? Yeah. You know, you design it. You have voltage sensing, you have current sensing, you have the microcontroller, all those things you should put in the circuit. Did you build it yourself or buy 
4 over pi times v in over 2. But in this, in this circuit, in this thing like what is here, in the VDC, right? So how much we want to have? 100 volts peak, right? So put 100 volts here. 4 over pi times VDC. So it's going to be almost 75% of this one, right? It's going to be something about uh, VDC should be, let me see, almost, uh, almost 80. Right? Also, so you said you want to have a 10 volt, sorry, 100 volt at 40 kilohertz. I select this part to resonate at both frequencies. At 40 kilohertz, why? Because if it's at 40 kilohertz, these two are going to cancel each other, right? And I'm going to see this voltage, this voltage, yeah. This guy is going to see kind of perfect sign waveform. Not perfect. You remember the Q thing we talked about? It is a heavy load. It's going to filter the rest of the harmonics, right? So if I select the resonant frequency this much, I'm going to get the best result at this one. Because Think about it, see? The curve is like this, right? I'm going to get the maximum gain here, right? If I'm here, I'm going to get less gain. I'm going to get less gain, right? So basically, if I select here, I'm going to have the best gain. I can say equally, it's like this, right? If you're particular, these two, they're going to cancel each other, right? So, and that what it's going to call all applies to this resistor, right? So how much is the F0 or FR? So already I select the VDC. I know how much VDC I want, right? Now I have another equation here. It says from the other side, I know FR is 1 over 2 pi S square, S square of LR CR, right? So I have another equation here. So basically, it's 40 plus 400. Right? I need one more equation. I need one more equation to be able to calculate LR and CR, right? The other equation is coming from here. Before going there, let's say let's see how much power we have in the first place. So if you have a sine waveform here, the maximum is 100 volt. How much power goes in very little? Anybody? We have a resistor. The maximum voltage is 100 volt. We are For the first case, P load is VRMS to the power of 2 over R, right? How much is the VRMS? Based on what we designed, the peak is going to be the peak is going to be 100 volt, right? The RMS is going to be divided by this, divided by 10, right? Basically, this is the 1 over 2 times tau, right? 500 watt. 500 watt, right? In the second case, how much do I want to have? 125. I want to have 125 watt. Right? How much is 125 compared to 500? One fourth. One fourth. Right? This one is in the wrong number. It's one fourth. Basically, it's saying, this, let's go back to the definition of this problem here. It says, hey, I want to deliver one fourth of the power of at point eight, you know, of the resonant frequency, right? So go select L and C, right? Now think about this circuit. This guy they are fixed, right? This guy they are fixed. So basically this voltage that cannot change. This V1 is gonna be a function of this one, right? Now I need to reduce the power here. I have a resistor, this one is fixed, and what can I do? I need to reduce the power here. Uh, 
meter. How much is the power here? We say we are to the power of two over power, right? Or, or, we can say R times I R is the power, right? In the first case, we have some current at the moment. We can calculate, right? I cannot change the voltage because voltage is a function of these two, right? This V one look at here is four over pi V D C, right? So the voltage I cannot change, right? But what I can change is this current. How? Frequency. Why frequency? Because if it's not resonant, this one has some value, right? If I go select the right number, I'm going to have a select. We can select the right impedance to give me the right current. If the power is one force, how much the current should be in the compared to the first case? Half, right? Yeah, because if the current is half, right, R I is squared, right? The power would be force, right? One force, right? Basically, if I can select the resonant frequency, which is it shouldn't be less than this much. This current is half of what it was. I'm good. I'm going to deliver 125 watt, right? And the rest are satisfied also, right? Now, to think about it this way now. I want to make my current half. First case, how much impedance I have here? R. Just R, right? Or admittance I had a half of that, one over R, right? Second case, see, we're gonna go with the absolute value of that, because in the second case, we are not in the resonant frequency. We're gonna have some X, L, and XC here, right? But the RMS of the current is important, right? The RMS of current is V RMS over Z, right? Right, I don't care about the phase and anything, right? Just, I can, I'm gonna control the I RMS, right? First case only I have R here. Second case is gonna be something, I don't know, the combination of these two, right? X L plus J X L minus J X C, right? Those kind of things. But what I know, the current is gonna be half of what it was before, right? Now let's write the admittance here. No, we can write the impedance, we can write the admittance now, but let's write the admittance. But let's say, how much is the admittance, admittance of this circuit? General, we're going to do general. It's going to be one over R plus LS uh, plus one over CS, right? These are the impedances, right? R, LS, and one over CS, they are the impedance of each of those elements, right? Add them together, one over that is the admittance, right? Now, uh, you can you can simplify this one to get to this equation. This one can go to this one. By S can be one over Q S over omega zero divided by uh, S over omega zero to the power of two plus one over Q S over omega zero plus one. Or you don't have to even write it this way, but because this is included this way I'm doing it. You know you can just put the values there and that's it. Go ahead. Now <coughs> If you want to calculate the <coughs> y, just divide everything by this one, make the denominator is going to be 1. If you do all this kind of thing, you're going to get this straight okay. yj omega. going to be 1 over R times 1 over 1 plus Q squared. I think this one was uh, omega over omega 0 minus I think omega 0 plus 
for I think we have this one. We have we have like, this is one but we care about this one. Basically for the middle left. I think we calculated this one already with all the notes we have. Right? Now how much is the y j omega zero? R. R. One over R. One over R, right? It says don't go less than this much. I'm going to select exactly this frequency, right? You can select it point <coughs> nine if you want to go more than less than point nine. But you know, they told me don't go less than point eight of the resonance frequency. I'm going to select that, right? Y of j point eight omega zero. How much should be the absolute, the, the impedance, the value of this impedance? How much should be one over two? One over two. Right. It doesn't mean it's a resistive, be careful. But it's a value. For example, it's going to be 1 over 5. It is, yes, the, the, this one is not the purely resistive. But the, as I said, I do care. We said I RMS is V RMS over impedance, right? This much. I care about this one. This one is fixed. I cannot change it, right? So I'm trying to control this one. If I want to have an RMS current half of what I have, so this Z should be 2R, right? I should be, first time was R, this time should be 2R. Just the absolute value, I'm saying this is not purely resistive, right? So we have this one. Now, I'm going to do this equation. How much is the Y at the <coughs> omega equal to 0.8 omega, 0.8 omega 0? Just replace it here. It's going to be 1 over r times 1 over 1 plus q squared. How much is omega? Right? So basically, this one is going to be 0.8, right? Minus. This one is going to be 1 over 0.8, right? Right? This is the admittance. I have 0.8 omega 2. How much should this be? <coughs> right? So you can go, this is only the only unknown is Q, right? You go calculate the Q. Q is gonna be 3.85 and uh, you have one equation here, right? And you put the uh, what, how much is Q? Q is omega zero L <coughs> over R, right? Q is 3.85. Omega zero is how much? Right. How much is R? 10. And this is the LR. So you can find out how much is the LR. So LR is going to be 1.5, 1.53 magnitude. And if you know LR, you can use that equation. How much is CR? Is that a point one one? If you are interested, check how much is the third one is called. Because we said it's a high Q, we remember we had this assumption. The current is gonna be sine wave from right, if you have a high Q, right? But it's still there are some third harmonics. If you want, go check in how much is the third harmonic top. 